any uh, bull that has had a special operation as a calf to gentle it down a little bit, if you know what I mean. And uh, <clears throat> oftentimes folks will eat what they call a steer, uh, usually from about 18 months onward, but a full-grown steer is called an ox, and it takes about four years to get to that uh, point. In fact, <clears throat> oxen that are going to be working in teams start out as young calves, and they're always hooked together in the same place. The one on the left is always on the left, the one on the right is always on the right, and they have a yoke that goes over both their necks, and there's a ring that hangs down from the middle of the yoke where the pulling chain for whatever they're pulling, whether it be a wagon or a plow, is hooked to with a hook. They go through five sets of yokes before those oxen are fully mature. And they only learn five commands. Get it! G, haw, back, <coughs> and the most important one, whoa! <laughs> I mention this because the oxen were cons considered to be a far better draft animal for the needs of the army in the Western Plains, and they played an important part in my life. My father got a contract with Fort Leavenworth to supply hay. And so the first year that we were there, 13 weeks after we arrived, we brought a load of hay to Fort Leavenworth. Sold it. We were coming back in our wagon. And there was a roadhouse about two miles before our place, and it was owned by some Missourians. These were rough people. They had their pantaloons stuffed in their boots. Every one of them carried a knife or a pistol. And they were all pro-slavery. My father did not agree with their philosophies. And as we were going by, they stopped us, and they wanted to know what his philosophy was, and he demurred and, and, and didn't say much, but they, they forced the issue. Now, my father was one of the bravest men I ever knew. He got down off that wagon, got up on the stump, and he proclaimed not only was he against slavery, he was even against having any black people in the state of Kansas. And that was his position. This did not please a crowd of about 100 men and women. Not only did they boo, they were saying things like, kill him. A young man who worked for my uncle over in Weston happened to be part of the crowd, and he was very pro-slavery. And he snuck up behind my father on the stump, got up there on that stump behind him, pulled out a big bowie knife, and stabbed him twice in the back. My father collapsed onto the ground. I ran to get him, and cooler heads prevailed, or that young man would have killed him right there and finished the job. And they pulled him off. Later on, he became quite a rambunctious person in the border wars between the North and the South over the free state of Kansas. I got my father to the wagon, got him back home, just decided to take him to Weston, where he was doctored up. And what happened after that, I'll go into just a minute, but there's another person that you need to be introduced to 